Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I want to talk about what is not working for you. And this topic was inspired because I've been putting off a lot of projects in my house. I've been starting one and not really finishing one. And we're having somebody watch our house next weekend. And I, I'm so tired of when somebody comes over, I say oh, I'm really sorry that this isn't working or you have to jimmy rig this to get it to work right. And in order for me to attract the things I want in life, I have to take care of and value what I already have. Like, how can I ask for more if I'm not taking care of what I have right in front of me? And so I've been on this journey to kind of quote, fix myself and fix my environment and fix my surroundings. And so this weekend, I had a four day weekend. Um, We were supposed to go to see my mom, but um, that didn't end up working out, which is okay. It gave us time to work on the house and to work on me and to work on my business and to just relax. It was such a good weekend, such a good weekend. I feel like I knocked out a ton of stuff. So I'm sitting here thinking, what's not working in my life? And the, the question goes for you too, like what's not working in your life? And so we go to the home improvement store and we start getting some stuff. Actually, let me take a step back. This started, <laughs> this started because last spring, So spring of 2017, early spring, we started doing our floors in our house. We started this home improvement project where we were going to, you know, do the floors and paint and new light fixtures, new doors, new cabinets, just kind of work our way through our house. And we got majority of the floors done, but the step, the step was a bitch. And if you've ever been to my house You've seen that all of the floors are done except for the trim. (laughs) Nobody likes the trim and nobody likes the stair because it's difficult. Like it takes time. You have to cut the pieces, fit everything accordingly. And it's just not the same as laying floor throughout the rest of the house. You know, like the, the new flooring is just, it's like puzzle pieces. They just like snap together. It's super easy and it's a floating floor. So you don't have to like nail anything in. It's just snap pieces and go. So we had completed the whole floor in the living room and in the kitchen and we had painted the kitchen and painted the living room. Um, (laughs) But we never did the trim. Like we just stopped because it was difficult. We just kind of half-assed it by not finishing it. And so lately I've been feeling this irritation, this frustration of things not being complete around me. And I'm like, okay, I really want to do redo our kitchen. I really wanted to redo this. I really want to redo that. And I had like a aha moment where I said, how can I move on to another project if we don't even complete the projects that we already have? Like we're just half-assing everything. I said, no, we can't start another project until we start finishing this, until we start treating the things that we have with value, with appreciation. So this weekend, we decided to finish the trim, finish the stair, and in the process, I decided that I hated the paint color that I had picked like a year and a half ago, which I, it wasn't the exact paint color that I wanted. I was going for like this super off-white with like a hint of like mint, and it turned out like seafoam green. So you guys, my whole living room has been like seafoam green for like two years, and I'm just not digging it anymore. I'm a huge fan of Joanna Gaines and like that whole farmhouse style. Like I live in a farmhouse. I want it to look like a nice farmhouse. And so that's kind of the thing I'm going for. I want lots of natural colors, whites and you know, the metals and the natural wood. So that's what I'm going for. And so we finally go to the home improvement store this weekend and we get the pieces to finish the step. And then we finish the trim of the floor and then you have to do like the baseboard around it so we finally got all that stuff I spent this whole weekend 
just working on the house and it is not my specialty. I'm actually a terrible designer. So like Pinterest is my friend. I always have to Pinterest everything and we're on our way to Lowe's and I'm like panicking. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what color I want. I don't know. Do I want light trim or dark trim? Do I want white trim? Do I want this kind of trim? It was a total meltdown. I felt like a toddler. I just couldn't make up my mind and I'm like, this is resistance. This is my resistance kicking in. It's trying to tell me not to finish the things that I need to finish. And it's hard, you guys. It's uncomfortable because it's not something that comes easy to me. Like interior decorating, home improvement. I mean, like I can get down and dirty with the best of them, but when it comes to making things look nice and appealing in, in my home, it's hard. Like I just, I'm not good at it. And so it's outside my comfort zone, but my brain is like making up every reason why I can't finish these projects. So I, I almost had a meltdown and I'm like, well, I can't do this. I can't do this. This is just too hard. Like, this is stupid. I don't want to paint. I don't want to do trim. I don't want to do any of this stuff. Like, can't we just hire this? And the truth is we could, but then what am I learning? I'm learning just to half-ass and then hand it off to somebody else to finish it. Like, there's no value in that. And so I'm like, no, I committed to this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it if it kills me. Come hell or high water, I'm going to finish this freaking living room because I'm sick of things not working in my life. Like I'm sick of just, oh, that's just how it is. I'm, I'm sick of the, well, my, my room's this not complete because I didn't feel like it or why does it really need to be done or all these excuses, you know? And it's, it's like a metaphor for life. Like if you're, if the things in your house aren't working, what else isn't working in your life? Like if you don't fix the things that are easy intangible like little steps in front of you like how are you going to fix the bigger things in your life and so I'm like oh my goodness oh my goodness how am I going to get this done (laughs) you guys should have seen me I was a wreck (laughs) but I did it and it actually looks really good I second guessed myself like 18 million times and we decided on so like my floors or like that, that barn wood, um, look. And I just, I love them. I think that they're great. They are like 18 different shades of wood, you know, or they're like rustic looking and they're just, they're really cool. And, and the walls are like this really light cream color. And then, um, the trim is all white. And I ended up painting our door like this navy grayish blue and then like I did our big bay window in like this navy grayish blue and it looks so freaking good I was like oh my goodness I'm standing there looking at this last night and it's like 11 o'clock because I was like I am finishing this tonight I don't care I am not moving on to another project until this is done I'm not going to sleep until I'm done and I took a step back and it was just like I felt proud I felt accomplished You know, I super struggled the past four days trying to get this living room whipped into shape. And to be honest, like, do you ever sit in a room in your house and you just don't like it? And every time you go in there, you just kind of cringe. You're like, ugh, that's how I was. And I said, you know, enough is enough. I'm sick of standing in my living room and just cringing because the floors aren't done or because the lights need to be changed or because I hate the paint on the walls. Like, if you don't love your environment, how are you supposed to feel good about where you're at? So I'm totally overhauling everything in my life. And just when I think I've, you know, fixed what's around me or like healed myself or worked on this, there's always the next thing. And so, you know, I'm, I'm working through these emotions. I'm working through these relationships. I'm working through all these blocks that I have around, you know, self-worth and time management and decluttering. And just when I think I fix something, I end up showing myself that there's more things that need worked on, (laughs) that need done, that need fixed, that need healed. And, and so it's just kind of funny. And where was I getting with this for you? It's what's not working in your life. So for me, my environment is currently not working for me. I currently do not feel joyous, happy, content in my household. And what's the best way to start changing those feelings is to take action, right? So I'm doing the things 
simple steps, you guys. Like I only spent maybe a couple hundred bucks this weekend on home improvement. That's going to make me feel a ton better. And the projects are done. I can cross them off the list because I'm a big list person. I love to cross things off. And I can move on to the next thing. So what in your life is not working? Just take a mental checklist. Let's go through your house, okay? Do you have to jimmy rig certain things? Do you have to explain things to people when they come over? This can be as simple as, oh, this light switch doesn't work because this, or that light, you have to do this, or you have to turn the bathtub handle this way and then this way and then pull this and then, you know, I'm sure there's something you can think of in your house that just isn't working for you right now. How is this a metaphor for your life? What else in your life isn't working? Like think of your work environment too. Whether you work at home, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, whether you're in the corporate world, what isn't working? What are you tolerating in your life? Where do you find yourself saying, that's just how things are. That's just the way it is. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. And my living room is a metaphor for that. Like, I don't have to tolerate the paint on the walls, that seafoam green. I don't have to. I can change it. All I have to do is take action. And the floors. Yes, it was hard to finish them. Yes, I had to ask my husband for help. But we did it. We worked through the resistance and all the stupid excuses that came up and got it done. And this is also a metaphor for life. So where in your life are you trying to complete something, but you find yourself getting stuck and you find yourself struggling to ask for help and the resistance is coming up and the excuses are coming up because really guys, that's all it is. (laughs) We have made up a year and a half worth of excuses on why we couldn't finish these floors. The biggest reason was because I am a slight perfectionist and the stairs weren't going to turn out the exact way that me and my husband had thought they were going to just because of the type of flooring that we had picked. And so instead of just figuring it out and working through that, we put it on the back burner and just like covered it up. We'll worry about it another day. We'll worry about it another day. You guys, that day was a year and a half. (laughs) So what in your life are you tolerating for a year and a half or longer? What can you fix today? And this goes with relationships too. What relationships are you tolerating? What relationships aren't working in your life with your family, with your friends? Maybe you've outgrown your friends. Maybe you can't sit at the bar another night and bitch about your catty neighbor Like maybe you want to have deeper conversations about how to build your business or how to find people who you can talk to on deeper levels, who you can travel with, who you can confide in, who you can talk about the deep shit that goes on in our heads that is sometimes frowned upon. Like I can only talk about the weather so much (laughs) before I need to have a different conversation and I'm, I'm that type of personality, though, that I can switch gears pretty quick. But I really enjoy having those in-depth conversations with the people closest to me or with the people in my mastery program. I just really enjoy those conversations. And I always feel like I grow out of it. And I know, or I shouldn't say I know, I hope that the receiving end of that conversation is also having aha moments, right? So I just want you to think, what is not working in your life? What can you fix or heal in your life right now? What action steps do you need to take? And this can be super simple. Maybe you just need to get rid of those clothes that you're never going to (laughs) wear. Get get rid of those clothes that you think you're going to fit into someday and just donate them. You know, when you get to that ideal weight that you're looking for, you can celebrate with new clothes. But that'll be another podcast talking about our ideal weight. (laughs) What around the house? So is it your kitchen sink? Is it your steps like me? Is it light switches? Is it, what is it? What system is not working in your house that you can just easily fix with a little bit of brainstorming and a little bit of action? 
and then take it up a notch. What's not working in your work environment or even in your car? Like, do you have a check engine light on right now? <laughs> When's the last time you got your car checked? What are you putting off? What isn't working that you are putting off fixing? And then just find an action plan, create an action plan to get these things taken care of. It's hard for us to manifest more. It's hard for us to manifest abundance in our life when we don't value and appreciate what we already have. It's like the universe is saying, why would I give you more? You don't even like the things that I give you now, right? And that's just like a toddler. Like you give them one thing and they're like, more, I want more, I want more. And it's like, well, you have this in front of you. Why don't you like that? It's the same thing, guys. You can't ask for more. The universe, God, soul will not give you more until you start to value and appreciate and take care of the things that you already have in your life. What's not working for you? What can you fix today? What can you fix right now? Make a list. Grab a journal. Journal about it for 15 minutes. Set a timer. 10 minutes. Set a timer. Write all the things that come to mind. Don't e- you don't even have to like overthink them. Just write them down. Whatever comes to mind. What is not working in your life? I have a mile long list of what's not working. And every time I knock something out, I move on to the next thing. And just when I think that I have all my ducks in a row... One little crazy one goes off to the side, brings me another path and was like, oh, Sasha, look at this big thing that you never even thought about looking at. (laughs) And that's a whole nother can of worms, right? So this journey is continuous, but each step that you complete and conquer, you feel a little bit better and then you can help the next person in that same journey, right? So what can you fix in your life? What's not working? What can you do today to get one step closer to feeling better? One step closer to where you want to be. Okay, and that's all I have for you today. And then I do have, so I do want to tell you something, kind of switching gears. If you're not interested, tune out. But that was, that was the show for today. But I do want to tell you, so the month of September, I'm hosting a seven-day challenge, a seven-day confidence challenge, or a seven-day badass challenge. It can be found at SashaDavis.com, and it's the badass seven-day challenge. And this challenge is free for the month of September. So I'm trying something new. You know, a lot of you have been reaching out to me saying, well, I'd really like to try it, but this or but that. So I tell you what, no more excuses, guys. Try the challenge for free. So there's two ways that you can do this. If you go to SashaDavis.com, you can join the free Facebook group. I'm going to be going live every day at 8 a.m. with a new action step for the day. And then you can also get lifetime access to the course on SashaDavis.com if you register for it. Like I said, it is free for September. October will be a different story. So I want you to head on over. We're going to talk about things like self-love and self-confidence and Building your tribe, building your community, branching outside our comfort zone, you know, leaning into that discomfort and maybe doing some things that we never thought that we would do, which is how we grow, right? Like you don't grow from being in your comfort zone. You don't grow by being in your bubble. Just like me over the weekend, I really was uncomfortable trying to redo my living room. It was like the most unnatural thing for me. And I know some people really thrive in that area. That is not me. Put me on a stage. I will talk in front of people all day long. Put me on a horse, you know, things like that. Put me somewhere where I have to like paint and decorate. I panic. I'm just not, (laughs) that's not me. But I still have to go through those things, that that discomfort to grow. And to prove to myself that I can do these things. And then it's not so bad after all. Like, and it just makes me feel that more, that much more accomplished and successful. And that I can do anything that I set my mind to. No matter how difficult or how many stories or how many excuses I make up. So I want you to head on over to SashaDavis.com. Sign up for the challenge. You'll see me live inside my Facebook group. My private Facebook group. Um, my private free Facebook group. Sorry, I have two private groups, one for the mastery program, uh, which is for my one-on-one clients. And then I have my free group, which is for the, the badass challenge. And then I do other live videos and lots of other goodies in that group to get you being a badass in your own life. 
So head on over again, sashadavis.com. I can't wait to see you guys on the inside so that we can start taking action in our lives, doing the uncomfortable things to help us grow and be a badass. All right. Until next time, guys. Peace out.